we're here at TGS, an engineering firm that is based in the Czech Republic, and Paul and myself have been invited. In fact, I was invited to go on stage, wasn't I, Paul? Yeah, I, I, I left because I thought, it, you know, there's nothing worse than having people watch you do stuff like that, but I heard you did a, a fantastic job. Oh. It was very well received. We're going to take you on a little tour. Basically, they've got a five-axis fair on, so they've got a big event where they've got suppliers here as well, um, and lots of attendees, a lot of engineers. So um, from my perspective, the reason that they've brought us over here, MTD, CNC, is to really put the Czech Republic on the map, talk about industry and what they do well. I think they were known for production many years ago, um, and they're changing. You know, it's in, as we've heard many a time, it's in their DNA to be engineers. Um, in fact, we got told by a gentleman that a lot of Czech people make their own houses. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. first time I've heard you, anything like that. If I did like that, that it'd fall down. Well, it wouldn't be... Would, it wouldn't it be would. habitable. Um, <laughs> but it is a really industrial nation, and in fact, I think their GDP, or they've got, it's about 20 to 25% of their GDP comes from manufacturing. It was even more some years ago. Um, but this particular business, like you say, has invited us here to yeah. show off, really, their engineering expertise which is probably a good way of summarizing it and what you'll see or if you came to a show like this and what you'll see coming to our channel over the coming weeks is a plethora of videos that, that show not just the fact that they're selling the machines we're going to look at mm. but they provide uh, you know uh, production facilities as well don't they so they don't just sell the kit but they can actually make your parts too absolutely so if you look at the life cycle of a product many moons ago or um, yeah the beer i have actually had a beer today well look, let's start with, I know oh, you just really about, quickly just yeah. many moons ago they were known for production but now they they want to see the whole lifestyle uh, uh, cycle sorry of the whole product and so it's not just the machines but it's everything beforehand go on you go yeah you go. and, and the, the the whole fair this week is about five axis machining yeah what a place to start i mean a barmia machine uh, a great example of a, a very flexible five axis machine and in fact i've not seen an Ibamia this small yeah. i know they i know the ones we normally look at i think is the 2000 and the and the 3000 i think yeah. there where you've got the partition in the middle but here you can see you know five axis and, and we're going to be seeing that cutting tomorrow and um, but it's not just the machines on their own is it which Not is what all. we can see here oh exactly and you're going to see a lot more of what they offer in just literally the next couple of minutes so here i'm thinking this is a bit of parts handling this is system integration and that's exactly what they provide so it's not just about being you know when we think of a dealer you just think of shifting machines um, or kind of turnkey packages it's more that end that they're looking after isn't it the turnkey solutions well i think you you've got to look at industry on a whole and you've got to think that automation we talk about it around the world. You know, we're here in the Czech Republic today. We've got, in fact, we've got a team in Sweden. We've got people in the UK and America. And on, cool. in the majority of conversations we're having are focusing around automation and unmanned running. And like you say here, this isn't just a simple, um, you know, robot cell here. No. This, this is a fully, fully integrated. You've got outfeed conveyors. You've got pallet systems, robots. You've got a, a Kitamura machine there, which is a twin pallet machine, which which I believe this must be working in conjunction with and, and, and feeding to a degree, perhaps. Um, but, and then to, to, to this solution here, then you've got a, a turning center, you've got a machining center, you've got a robot, you've got um, a draw system. So you're feeding a lathe, which has got a subspindle as well as a machining center yeah. for milling as well. So you, you know, very, very diverse automation offering. And all of this comes from the intelligence of the that the skills that, you know, the 100 plus employees that TGS yeah. have here uh, within their business. It's the mastery behind it all. It's piecing all of everything together. Now, oh, interestingly, behind us, 3D printing. You know, Pavel, um, who's like the president here, he's the owner of the company, started the business in 1991, so 30 years ago. He didn't want to get into 3D printing. He was like, I like metal. Yeah. I like metal. That's where he, his love, what, it was actually from his father where his love from the industry's come from. Um, but he was like, no, 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 no. But it is actually because of market demand as to why he's got into this. And it has literally been overused, admittedly, a game changer for this company, especially in producing molds. There is so much scope in the 3D printing. Well, well, I, well, I think it's um, interesting printing. because 3D printing is, it does offer you um, the ability to make parts far quicker. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's prototyping, whether it's you know, just testing parts out, or whether it is production, you know, with, with 3D printing nowadays, it's not... Time. Yeah, time. And, and this company being able to offer metal cutting solutions and then adding that to their portfolio as well has obviously opened up a lot more markets for them. 
Uh, you mentioned, Pavel, when I first got here, the, do you know what the first thing I did was? Wow. Or what you got me to do? Drink one of those shots. <laughs> he did that to me yesterday. Me. It was like half past 11 this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, had really? a peppermint one. And time? you know what the worst thing for me was? Everyone had one and they, were, they got it and I went like that. And as I went like that, there were still people's uh, glasses that were still I full. I did exactly the same. <laughs> I, did exa I drank it and Pavel's was still half full. So, and I was like, oh, are we meant to sip this? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm such yeah. a thug. <laughs> but it went, like, burnt my throat, went to my head. But the hospitality has been fantastic. Oh. Of course, that's not what people come to our channel to watch. I think the message, in oh, fact, yeah, let's have a look over here. Just mention this tooling. They, they also, on top of every, literally all of the services they offer, they actually make their own tools. Yeah. Well, this is the difference here. This, for me, was uh, what m opened my eyes, was coming here, and I'll be honest with you, you know, we've spoken about this before. When I came here, I wasn't quite sure of the entirety of the services that they offered. Yeah. I thought they were a machine tool dealer, which they are, you know, the likes of a Barmier, Kitamura, Schmeck. Mm -hmm. If you want those machines in the Czech Republic or Slovakia, you buy them from here. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't quite realise, that actually, the extent of the engineering solution that goes with it and how the value added aspect I think is so important it. for them. Mm. And because of the way their economy sits just in, in, in the EU and how they compete is not just on cost, they have to have that added value. Yeah. So we were talking to some machining companies from around the, the country and they were saying actually, you know, a business like this that has so many skills within it, mm. they're better off giving all of the development and research and um, you know, when they're trying to chase times and save money, they're better off giving all of that to TGS to yeah. evaluate, research and come up with a, a better and more productive solution. And that's what the guys that are kind of in those offices mm. are actually doing. And how does that compare to a lot of places we go? Well, we'll go to companies and often, you know, they might do turnkeys where they'll sell a machine and then they'll go to a cutting tool supplier. Um, and they'll go to a work holding supplier, they'll, a they'll, they'll, they'll bring it all together and <laughs> get down there and they'll bring it all together um, and then they'll supply it as an end project. But here, like you pointed out, they'll actually develop it even further. They'll make the cutting tool, they'll make the fixture. It will be a TGS product and then that will go into whatever they select or deem is the right machine. So it is another step beyond what we traditionally we see. And I think that's been the interesting thing for me. And when we came out here, we, we didn't quite know no. what we were going to see and what we were going to witness. But I mean, in all some of these automation cells and right at the back of the, um, the facility here is their production department where they've got five axis yeah, machines. Show me an impeller. They're doing subcom work as well. So you could say to them, I said to them, well, if I gave you a part and said, make me 200 of those, could you do it? Yes, we could. Yeah. And if I gave you a part and said, I need to make 200 of those myself, can you sell me a solution to do it? they would too and I think that's where a little bit of the difference lies and what the Czech or what they want to push about the Czech Republic trying to give their extra added value in their engineering skills as set. I said it is in their DNA to do this it is through history that they you know uh, over times and he said some um, actually I think it was Christian who said to us before you know uh, uh, in hard times inventing your own products is essential it's a necessity yeah. so it's gone through and yeah. that's why they are so powerful in being being able to look at every single part of the uh, the system the process yeah well you have to consider as well where we are in Europe bordering Germany and, uh, and other countries you know the automotive industry has obviously got its troubles at the yeah. moment you know there's a lot of automotive work in this in this country now they're having to reevaluate yeah. that you know, exactly the, the, the aerospace sector is now becoming a part of what, what they're being able to service. And mm. of course, that's, you know, really, really high end uh, added value product. So with that, you need really good skill sets because, you know, the automotive industry is known, you know, tolerances, maybe it's all about times. It's all about cost down, mm. but a, a plane can't fall out of the Complex. sky, as, as we've heard that on a, yeah. a few occasions today. So, yeah, been really impressed. I mean, Prague itself, we're only, what, 25, 30 minutes from Prague. Yeah. There's a bridge in Prague that was built a thousand years ago. What was it? Is it Ch Charles, Charles Bridge? Bridge. Built a thousand years ago, which is still in service. And that, that kind of shows the, I, I think, how that's built, um, the, the industrial mindset that this country, you know, has. And it's been a real experience. Favourite bit? Having a shot this morning? Having a shot this morning, yeah. I'll probably have it a... A shot in a minute as well, I guess. I mean, <laughs> After this video. Have, the Czech beer is actually it? really, really nice. But I don't yeah. think I'd have another, I don't think I'd have another <laughs> no, shot. But I'm going to have to sit shot. down anyway. Good oh. luck. <laughs> uh, can I get down here? Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll have a sit down too. Thanks for that, Paul. Time to relax. Oh.